So today we're taking a look at US soft touch elevator buttons. Let's go ahead and get started. So these were some of the last fixtures that US Elevator manufactured, and they're definitely quite interesting, and they have an interesting style to them as well. So the one we're looking at today is the more touch sensitive, or in this case, it's a pressure sensitive type button. Now some of the soft touch buttons have physical micro switches in them, so when you push them in, they click. These are the ones you just kind of touch and they activate. And we'll look at how this works here in a little bit. As for the particular fixture I have, you'll notice that I am missing a piece down here. There is a key switch here that says call, and then there's the button. There's also a little bit of paint and dirt here, and I'll be cleaning this up as well. So if we turn this to the back, we can kind of get a look at how this works. So first there's the key switch, and this is just like any other key switch. You can't really see any of the workings of it. It just kind of clicks, but the key has two positions. It has the on and then just the other position. However, the way this is wired, both this position and this position do the same thing. So something kind of interesting about this fixture as I was looking at the wiring, the button was never actually hooked up. So pushing the button never did anything. This thing was primarily used by the key switch. So you had to insert your key and turn it on to make it work. And you also notice because of that, the key switch is very destroyed. I mean, this, this is not very secure. This is the correct key for it, but I've used some other keys to activate it, I and mean, you can kind of just poke at it and it'll, it'll turn. So definitely a worn out key switch, but it's kind of interesting that the button itself was never used. However, the light was. So back to the actual button. And this here is what these buttons look like from behind. So something quite interesting about these buttons is you'll see here, if I push on it, you'll see that it actually moves. The whole thing kind of moves back and forth. And this movement doesn't actually affect the way the button works at all. This is just kind of a fake movement actually to make it feel like you're pushing the button when in reality, that movement doesn't do anything. If we get a little bit closer, we can kind of see how this works. However, there's no moving parts. This is all electronic. I mean, let's say there's some wires down in there. And then on the back here, there's a few components you can kind of see. We got a resistor, a couple diodes it looks like. And something quite interesting is on the side here, we've got this patent number. So if you go onto the internet and look up this patent number, you can actually get some more schematics and kind of more information about how these buttons work. So if that's your kind of thing and you want to look this up, there's the number and you might be able to learn something from it. It's kind of cool. Then on the back here, we have these little pins and each one has a corresponding letter and number. So you'll see S1, L1, L2, S2. And what these mean are actually quite simple. S2 and S1 are for the switch. So when you push the button in, that's what is completed. And if you do L2 and L1, this is for the light. So to activate the light, you would use this. And this whole thing is 24 volts. So as for wiring, we'll be using the S1 and S2 for the switch part and then the L1 and L2 for the light part. Now, something else to note about these buttons is when you push them, and it's not like a traditional button where the longer you hold it, the longer the contact is held down. When you push down on it, it creates an electrical pulse that the controller can pick up to say, okay, the button's been pressed, and then it activates the LED. The only thing you're really gonna get out of these buttons is when you push in on them, you'll get a little flash, and that's about it. You'll, have to, you'll push it in, it'll flash, you just have to keep doing that, but it won't stay on. If you wanted to make it stay on, you would need to build another circuit that would hold it on for a little bit longer. So before we actually get into wiring this button, let's clean it up a little bit. So like I said before, we have a big hole in the panel. Now my guess is there is probably a fire service key or some other key switch in here. Obviously it's been taken out. There's remnants of tape here. There's a little bit of paint splatter. So I'm gonna do a quick cleanup of the plate. So I got rid of the tape and some of the other stuff that was on here. So this definitely looks a lot better, but we still have a giant hole in the panel. And that's where this piece comes in. So I 3D printed this kind of filler piece and all that's left to do is just poke it right in there. And now the hole is gone. Now let's go ahead and get into the wiring of these buttons. And I will have information of all this stuff on my website as well. So you can go check that out if you need some more additional information. So before I wire it in the way that I'm going to for this particular panel, I'm just gonna show you how to set up a button on its own, show you what it does, and then show you what happens if you wire it the wrong way. So for this project, you will need 24 volts, whether that's through an AC adapter or with a battery. These batteries here are A23s and this little battery pack produces 24 volts. Now normally I wouldn't recommend using a little battery pack like this for 24 volts because they don't have a huge capacity. 
However, since this is just an LED and the amount of time that it's actually on is very little, I don't think it's gonna die out too quickly. So I'm gonna use this for my power supply. So like I said before, there's S2, S1, L2, and L1. And an easy way to remember this is the twos are your positive and the ones are the negative. So for the LEDs, you would put positive onto L2. And then in this case, my L1 is connected to the key switch. So I have the key switch enabled so I can just hook this up. But you'll see here if I connect, in this case, L1 to negative, the light turns on and it just stays on. Now, however, we want it where when we push the button, it lights it up. To do this, you're gonna add in the switch. So this is going to be done just like any other single call button. And I'll have a diagram of this on my website, which will hopefully help visualize it. But for this case, you're going to place the positive of your battery onto S2. So S2 is the positive. You'll wanna connect the S1 to the L2 pin. So I'm gonna do that with this jumper. And then you would connect the L1, so this one, to the negative. And now the button is ready to go. So if you see here, if I push it, you see it lights up, it just does a little pulse and it fades away. And the way that my key switch is wired in, if I were to disconnect the key switch to turn it off, it doesn't work. But that's just the kind of nature of the wiring here. So you'll see there, it works. So you might be wondering, what happens if I wire this wrong and put positive on S1 and then the other end on S2? Well, all that happens, the LED is just gonna turn on and that's all it's gonna do. The button won't do anything, it just stays on. So that's an easy way to know if you've wired it wrong. If it's just turning on without pushing the button, try flipping the polarity, and now it will work just fine. And if you do happen to flip the polarity of the L1 and L2 for the lights, nothing's gonna happen because they're LEDs and they only work in one direction. So while we have the button hooked up here in a working circuit, I'm gonna show you some of the different quirks about this particular button. So like I said before, the whole button can push in. And you'll see here, I'm pushing the entire button in and it's not activating. So the actual movement of this button doesn't affect the way it works. Now, if I put my finger on the back to prevent it from moving and I give it a little push, see I'm not moving the button at all, but it's lighting up. So it's not like an Otis touch button. If I just gently touch it, it doesn't activate. I can move my finger around, it doesn't activate if I touch it. However, if I give it a little force, it activates. So you have to provide some kind of force to activate it. You can activate it with other things too. So here's like a key. Same idea, you can't touch it, but if I give it some force on there, it activates. With like Otis touch fixtures, you could activate it with metal. You couldn't activate it with plastic, but this one, see, as long as I apply some force on it, it works. Here's an emergency phone sticker. Same idea, there it goes. As for this button being heat sensitive or heat would activate it, I, I don't know about that. I haven't tested that. Uh, I've held my hand on here for a while and it hasn't activated. The only way I've been able to get it to activate is by giving it a nice firm press. However, I could test this. I'm not going to. So if anyone wants to test that and send the results down in the comments, that'd be cool. So now that we've taken a look at some of the cool behaviors of these buttons and how to wire them up, I'm going to set this thing up for my project. So again, I already have the wiring set up in the way that I want. So the only way to actually make it work is to turn on the key switch, which I think is kind of cool. It's hooked up that way, makes it nice and easy to connect. However, on the back, I am going to need to do some work. So I'm going to need to connect my battery to my switch too. So S2, I need to connect the wire between here. As for the negative, I'm just gonna connect this directly to here, just like I had it here. And then I need to take this wire and hook it up to my S1. I'll probably just solder that on there because these are just little pins. And then to complete everything, I've got this box, which I'm gonna stick everything into. This is actually from a Dover panel, but I stuck some of these little clips in there and got it to work. So we'll put it in a box and it'll be ready to go. And now this panel is complete. Nice and restored, it looks really nice, and it's fully functional. So I can touch the button and it lights up. Only for a short second, but you can keep pushing it and it keeps lighting up. And the way I've wired it, you have to turn the key to the on position, or really either of the two positions to make it work. But I think that's kind of cool because that's kind of how it was originally. Gotta have your key to call the elevator. So thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. And again, more information about the wiring and what the pins do is available on my website, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.